Sometimes we would like to combine two lists. So for example, we might have people on the ship, the USS Enterprise, that are on the bridge. And we have Spock and Scotty and Uhura and so forth. And we also have skills that people on a, star, a starship bridge do. They search for intelligent life, they scan for enemy ships, they aim and fire the phasers and so forth. So let's assume that the captain says, I want all of my bridge staff, all of my bridge personnel to be trained on all of these skills. And we can set up a little DBA routine to be able to set up a schedule. These are available training days, Monday through Fridays, and we have some days open where we can train everyone on their various skills. And we'll just train one person each day so that we don't give too much training to do and we're not trying to train too many people all at once. So I have this set up so that we just have days of the week, Mondays through Fridays. And then our task there is to take these people and schedule each person and have them trained on every single skill. So what we could do is we could have Spock be trained and then in the first day he could search for intelligent life, be trained how to do that. On the second training day he could scan for any ships, enemy ships and so forth. So what we really want to do then is we want to have each person combined with each, a training day for each one of these skills. And we're going to put them over here in column G and column H. Well to do this we're going to need to be able to tell the code to go and look at every single one of these persons and to combine them with every single one of these skills and then after we do Spock we'll go to Scotty and then we'll do all of these then we'll do to Uhura and do all of these and so forth. Now to do this I want to show you a couple of ways that we can select ranges. So what we'd like to do is we're going to think about these this array of names as uh, a range and this set of skills as a range. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to declare person as a range and I'm going to declare skill as a range and then I'm going to use this range to be able to go down through every single record in the range. Now as we start off this workbook we need to start in the right place. We want to make sure we're on the right sheet. So you can see here that I've used the sheets uh, command to be able to select sheet 2 so I can make sure that I'm in the right worksheet or the right tab and then I've also uh, taken them to A4 just as a place to start so they're going to be right there alright and so I will do that and get to the right place now before I do this I put a couple of just extra demo lines in the code to show you how ranges could be selected if I were to know before I set up this code that I'm only going to have this many people and this many skills, then I could go to like range the ra range A4 through A8, for example, and I can just select that. So by putting a putting a comma between those, so let's go down in this code and just get this set up. I'm going to turn my debugger on so we can go down to this point. All right, and so right now I'm going to select a range from A4 to A8. And as you look over here at the left, when I did that, it selected all of these in this range. Uh, and so, and I knew the beginning cell and I knew the bottom cell in that range. So that's knowing beforehand what's going on. Now, what would happen if Captain Kirk looks at these people and he decides he wants to train a few other people? Well, if he does that, then what's going to happen is this line of code is not so great because it would miss the two people down there. So what we really would like to do, a more elegant solution, would be to say, I'm going to start at the top person, and I'm just going to go down, and I'll find all of the people here. And when I want to find all the people for skill, I'll start here on a B4, and I'll go down and find as many skills as there are. We don't like to hard code things in, in our code because it makes it what's called brittle. It makes it so that things just don't work if you change something. And we, we like our have our code be a little more elegant and more flexible than that. So another way we can do this, so I'm going to I'm going to now unselect this. Another way we can do this is instead of designating beforehand that we want to select and have to put in the before or the beginning and the end of the range, another very nice way to do this is to actually just put in the beginning of the range and then what this A4, you'll notice that this A4 is the beginning of the range, all right? And then what this command does is it starts the range at A4 and then it goes all the way down until it gets to the last record, all right? So this 
is going to accomplish the same thing as going down and finding the very bottom record. It will start at A4 and go down and find the very bottom record. So this is nice because it will start at the top and just go down as many values as there are. Just to demonstrate this, I'm just going to put in some extra stuff. So now when I go in here, we'll go down here and we'll, we'll go down to this point in the code. And now when I do this, then it selects all the stuff. So this, this is smarter because it goes to the top of the range and then the bottom part of the range, it will say, okay, I'm going to start at A4 and I'm going to go all the way down until I hit my last record and then it will select that. So that's a very nice little feature for just selecting records. Now we're going to take that idea, now that you understand how this little end XL down uh, operator works, we're going to take this very same idea and we're going to use it to specify the range. So I'm going to comment this line of code out here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this very same piece of code and just take the select off and put it down here and say for each person in range, so starting there's our range, we're going to go all the way down and start at A4 and then go down to the very bottom record in that range. We're not selecting essentially, what we're doing is we're saying here's a range and we're not going to make it bold, we're just going to say here's the range, it's going to start at A4 and go down to the last record in that range. Alright, so now Let's go back here and go down and uh, we'll start in the right place. Now it says for each person in this range from A4 down to the bottom. So it did that. So that range now, there's a range called person and this range called person now includes all of these values that are existing right here. And now we're sitting on the first person. So when it says for each person in that range, we're sitting on the very first person, which in this case is Spock, and that person.value is going to be loaded into a variable that I called crew name. So it's going to take the value of Spock and load it into crew name. So as I move down through there, now Spock's name is in crew name. Now that we've got the right name, we're going to jump over and we're going to work here and we're going to define this range. We're going to say for each skill in range B4, which starts right here, down to the last row down here, then uh, we're going to append these so that we have Spock, first we'll have Search for Intelligent Life, then we'll have Spock scan for enemy ships, Spock getting trained on aim and fire phasers, and so forth. Okay, so basically now, we, we got the name in the outer loop, we're going to jump in the inner loop, and we're going to pluck up every, each one of these in turn, and we're going to write these down this column. So now, for each skill in this range that we call skill, then we want to take the value of that skill, load it into a skill name. So now if I go down and hit this then, now we have search for intelligent life. That's what we loaded out of that very first skill into skill name. And so now we're ready to go and write these things out here. So what I'm going to do now is just make some space, delete these. Okay, so now we're ready to have the script go out and take the crew name and write it in here. Now, the way we're using the cells operator here is we're saying go down to the first output row, which we specified as three, go over to column G and take whatever's in this variable and, and put it in as the value of that cell. So when I hit go then, then what it will do is it will do that operation. So now it took Spock and put it in column G, and now it's going to take the skill name and put it in column H on that same row. So there's the skill name. Now the next time, we're going to move down here. We're still going to have Spock loaded in for the crew name, and we need to move this row down here so that we can get the next record. We can position the place for the next record. So by saying O row plus 1 equals O row, or O row equals O row plus 1, it'll bump up O row, so instead of being 3, it will be 4. So if I hit F8 now, you can, if I, you can see in my mouse over, or you can see in my locals window, the O row is 4. And then now we're at the next part of the loop, so it's going to jump back up here, and it's going to grab the next skill. So now we do this. It grabs the next skill. That's scan for enemy ships, so it grabbed that skill out of that. It's going to go down and write Spock's name in, and that skill and so forth. Then we're going to go to the next row, 
by bumping up that O row variable. And so now it's at row 5, so the next row will be written, written right in here. Now I'm going to go ahead and go through until we get Spock all squared away, all trained. And when I do that then, when we get down to pilot ship, once he's piloted the ship, then we're going to need to jump out of this for loop because we will have gone through every single skill on the range that goes from here to here. So now we've got Spock being trained on how to pilot the ship. So when I hit F8 to go to the next operator, now what we're going to do is we're going to jump back. Let's scroll down here so we can see it. Now what will happen is we will jump out to the, hit the next out here, and then we'll go grab, in the outer loop, we'll grab the next person in that person range. So now when I do this, it hits that next loop and now it's ready to go pick the next person out of the person range which is going to be Scotty. And so as I move down through here, now we've got Scotty in here as the crew name. All right, And then we're going to start this for loop again and we're saying starting at B4 going down to the end we're going to grab each one of those skills. So now we do that, we search for intelligent life and now we've got Scotty and search for intelligent life and now we're ready to go write those into the next O row which is going to be down here. We can see the O row is 9 which is the vet is the next open row and so we'll do that. And it looks like we've got everything working properly. We are sure that things are going to work like we want them to. I can turn do events off. Now what do events does, it stops and pauses for an instant and looks and see if there's any keyboard input that will break out of that loop. If you don't put a do events in and you start a loop and you don't have a proper way to terminate the loop, the loop will run forever until you turn your machine off. But if you do a do events in there by hitting in Windows by hitting escape or holding escape down or in Mac by pulling the control key down and the period down, what will happen is do events will listen for that keyboard input and it will allow you to terminate the loop so you don't have to turn your machine off to get out of that loop. Now that I've got the loop working like I want to, I'm just going to comment out do events. If I don't comment that out, then it's going to make the code run slower because every time we go to the next person, it's going to listen to see if I've put in something to break out of the loop. So once I've got my debugging done, making sure my loop is running like it should, I can just comment that out. So now I can just let the script run all the way to the end and finish populating these down to the bottom. So if we scroll down here then, we can see that we got all the way down to Sulu was our last name. His last skill to be trained on was pilot ship. And so now we've populated this all the way down. Now in this case, I just use a small number of persons and a small set of skills. But this, if you had a larger set of persons and a larger set of skills, this would work just as well. And so this would take something that could be a tedious task that might take a while, and it will just make it go very, very quickly. You can also see that it didn't take very many lines of code to make this happen. So we really did not have a lot of code because the operators in here are so powerful and so useful that it doesn't take very many lines of code to automate this little script.